I will tell you, uh, Carlos, if you're listening, I just cracked a black lid. I'm that confident oh, no, we can the redeem this film. Oh, the 9%ers, baby. <laughs> I should tell you, this segment's going to go. <laughs> if ever there was a movie. <laughs> the Imperial Stout by oh, Carlos Carrozza. All right, people, so we're going to be talking about our presumed Razzie nominee. Now, just to get into this, we are a positive film podcast. This is a gimmick, right? So we are. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! You're not setting it up. <laughs> oh no! So this is, we we don't we don't have a podcast so that we can shit on films. It's actually quite the contrary. Our job is to talk positively about films. I think we did the best we could with the last oh. film. You know, trying to get everything we wanted to say, but keeping it positive. I do believe that. So this film, Capone. I guess what? It's about Al Capone. Shock to everybody, right? So um, Tom Hardy plays famous Chicago mobster Al Capone in his later years in life. One of those little timelines don't matter things. But let's just say the last year of his life, he has been living in this mansion in South Florida Mm -hmm. for eight years. Because as most people know, Al Capone um, suffers from what they call in this film neurosyphilis, which I found hilarious, but I guess that's what it's actually (laughs) called. And apparently he got it when he was 14. (laughs) I did not know that. So thank you for this movie so that now I know. I got one thing out of this. Neurosyphilis started in Al Capone's body before the age of 15. I mean, I I would... would, uh, Basically, I'd put a caveat down as believing anything this movie presented as fact. Mm. Good point. Aww. Josh Trash. Josh Trank. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so this is our presumed Razzie film. So we're going to have to do our best to try to, um, you know, give a, a positive take on this. We love Tom Hardy. That is yes. no surprise to anybody who listens. We love Tom Hardy. Um, he was awesome so this in is Venom. Al Capone's last awesome in, awesome in a lot of, yeah. Hmm. Dave loves Venom, of course. Of course, that's the Tom Hardy film you choose. <laughs> Dave. Yeah. Dave, who's seen all of our Razzie I, films. I mean, this I year. also he did says, like Tom him. Hardy from Venom. Yeah. I, I, I did like him in uh, Terminator Salvation as well. Yeah. How about, um, what about his Star Trek movie? Can, do you remind me which Wait, Star Trek movie Sa- this is? Jeff? He's in Salvation. <laughs> <laughs> that's for even bringing that fucking thing up. <laughs> uh, I don't remember him in Salvation, but maybe. I don't I know. Bad Brothers. Worthington. Maybe it is. <laughs> yeah. Dave, drink. Okay, sure, all right, sure. there we go. The best part of Capone was Sam Worthington Mark and Lee. Al Capone. Okay, I'm off track. I'm off track here. First things first. This is on Prime. This is on Amazon Prime right now. Yeah, it Amazon obviously Prime, did yeah. not come out in theaters. Sorry, uh, Sam. Josh Trank, who unfortunately did the the final um, uh, Fantastic Four movie that maybe will ever be made. Uh, no, there's a new one. They've announced it. He also made Chronicle. Yeah, but I thought it was just Disney+. Plus. Who gives a shit? Okay, anyway, so Tom Hardy is in this film, and he's playing Al Capone in his final year of life, who is suffering from um, dementia, which was caused by having the neuro... Syphilis? <laughs> the neurosyphilis for more than... Thir- <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. For over 30 years of his life, and yes, penicillin was discovered during his time of life, but... It had already taken its toll. So he's going crazy. He's shitting himself, literally. Yes. <laughs> he's shitting the bed. Um, I mean, he's and full method, too. I'm, I'm wondering. Have a, he's full method. <laughs> all those smells that everybody was smelling. All right. Anyway, um, that's what this movie's about. <laughs> I ate a bunch of prunes before that. <laughs> so, huh, so and the reason the reason that odds makers, not us, odds makers believe that this is going to be nominated for some Razzie Awards is because it has a 4.7 on IMDb. It has a 46 out of 100 on Metacritic, and it is a 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. And the user reviews on Rotten Tomatoes are worse. It's actually 25% of user reviews. So and... you're listening at home <laughs> to this part of the podcast, and you're wondering, why am I even listening to this? Clearly, I shouldn't watch it. Tom Hardy's fucking awesome. He's an awesome actor. So we're going to talk about this goddamn movie, all right? Let's do it, people. Who wants to get us going? And Sorry to add to that Dave's list, fans, just, just, but... to, just to kick the... The HFCS, which is the Hawaii Film Critics Society. This is the nicest state in the union. They have nominated this for the worst film of the year. So Yeah, but they're kind. They probably said it with a way like, we know you tried. You yeah, like... they like passed you a joint. Yeah, I know. Uh, Linda Cardellini, Matt Dillon, good cast. Yeah. Good cast. Cardellini was um, awesome in this. Yeah, she really I mean, to be honest, so was Tom Hardy. He was yeah. he was okay. great in this. Not for a second did you not believe he was an aging man losing his mind with dementia. Yeah, his eyes got his pupils were. And even even the points. look, like they they he loves having the makeup plastered on him, but like the look, they got pretty much right. Right. All right. Yeah. So I 
I'm going to disagree with you. I, I oh, right I off the bat, come about, on, we're a positive yeah, am, film podcast. No, I'm going to say it, 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 there is positive criticism in here. I always believe Tom Hardy. I, I I do think he's a good actor, and I think there are some people who are, are not Tom fans, and I don't understand it. I think he's got a, a wide range. I think he's really great. But one thing that I always have to kind of just sign on for every time I go see a Tom Hardy movie is that he's going to be doing a different voice. And sometimes yeah. the voice does or doesn't work for me. It, sometimes it yeah. can be a little distracting. I always believe what's behind the voice. He's, I mean, he's a wonderful, he the, has a wonderful Everybody instrument. knows when you see a Tom Hardy film, turn on the fucking subtitles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, right? It's going to be a little weird. <laughs> the remedy I, I remember made up even his the first time, my favorite Tom Jeff, Hardy's it's true, yeah. <laughs> Jeff, the first time I saw... You and I went and saw The Revenant together with a, a buddy of ours. And I think yeah. you and I had a similar conversation when we walked out. I still bought everything, just like with this film. But this was probably the most I had to work to get past the voice. And I don't yeah. I know I thought if you were going to say you like this better than The Revenant for a second. I'm sorry. No, I don't. No, I don't <laughs> think so. I think this one, this one, this one got in the way for me. I still, I saw him in his, you know, I had saw in his eyes. I have a, you know, a decent sized television. I was able, I kind of pulled up a little closer. I was like, he's, he's doing the work. I'm believing what's behind it. I just don't know why they cast him. I, I feel like he's they were cast, other... He was cast for 10 years to do this role. He's not know, even 47 and I, yet in real life. No, and, and I believe, all right, all right no, so then let me, I mean, let me the take thing it is, to is the it, next point that I can't is it, about. is it the voice or is it what was written for him? The shitting the bed. Oh, sorry, what were you saying? Is it the voice yeah, or, is it, yeah. or is it what he was saying? Like what was written for him? Because well, I lay the blame Some, yeah. for this entire film squarely on Josh Trank. It was like written by, directed by, edited by. He probably did fucking edited catering by. as well. So, you know, it's like at some point, yeah. hand off your project to like another collaborator so that you get, you know, it might have been a better film if he had have taken a step back and let some other people collaborate. Which was your favorite Probably. shitting I think the that, pants moment? Because he shat his pants a couple times in this movie. I think my favorite? my favorite my favorite is the end one, the the FBI yeah, interview. Too. Um, that yes, whole, the FBI yeah. interview. Yeah, the bed one was funny, but it ended too quick. Sorry, John, were you talking about something serious? The bed one was just about, fucking uh, tragic. No. <laughs> we're talking about a movie. This man takes his shit Razzie. on screen. Yeah. this man takes his shit on John's screen. John's like, so, mm, let's know. break down the screenplay for a second. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess I don't. I, all right, all right, this is this is what I went into this movie thinking. And again, I don't. I'm not saying like I hate it when people go in with a movie in their head and when they're constantly thinking about a movie in their head. This isn't this isn't what I was doing. But I was afterwards. I was thinking like, all right, what can we what can we say, you know, to try to redeem this movie? Hmm. I was a little confused why they cast an actor who was younger than Capone to play up and not take advantage of that fact to have him play flashbacks. I yeah. kept thinking they're going to flash back at some point and we're going to get a little bit more context for how he got here, even though Capone is really famous and we've all seen, you know, maybe movies that are based on him, maybe most famously. Although, um, I mean, um, a couple of weeks ago, the, a couple of weeks ago with the five bloods, it worked perfectly. Hmm. Where they were going, but they were still flashing back. Yeah, they were flashing back, but they were flashing back as themselves. Yeah. So they've Except basically they yeah. basically the they flipped it. So I don't think his. Way. So I don't think his are these were. I don't know if these were actual flashbacks or if these were. No, this, were no, this this was dementia trips, and like from that perspective, yeah. it was done extremely well. Like, and I, the, I thought so for, too. For anyone who wants to come into this movie knowing what to expect, it's kind of like The Godfather meets The Shining. It was. I, what did you think, though? I will ask you specifically. Interesting. Matt Dillon's character was introduced realistically away from Tom Hardy. How was he not real? Did you guys catch that? Yes. We went to his yeah, apartment yeah, yeah. in New York in mm. real time, and he was having sex with that woman, and he got the phone call, and then he's not real. That that that, that literally confused me. Dude, Dude I, I was so confused, confused by that, by that point. point I missed. Phone call I was, was so confused by that point. I missed the point that he wasn't real. Yeah. Well, because he was the guy in the flashback. That and that that actually might have been a dementia trip that was based in reality, if that makes sense. I guess so. I mean, I guess that's what it was. But there were multiple times. Anyway, what, what I was saying was there was there was. I thought they were going to give us a little bit more context because unless you've seen, you know, some movies that like Public Enemy and some things that are loosely based on him. And uh, Jeff, what is that goddamn De Palma movie? Where Robert De Niro plays Capone and Kevin Costner. The, the Untouchables. You, the Untouchables. Thank mm. you, The Untouchables. So we've seen, you know, that's probably the most famous one where they try to realistically yeah. portray Capone, but that is for like, th that is like for four Sean months Connery's where they're working in that. case. 
I know it's but, good. And then um, that scene where he, did it like that scene where he walks back into the shack to interrogate someone. It's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. It's a good movie. Uh, so I wanted more. I guess I was kind of expecting them yeah. so to if you, actually if you, if you play to us with talk, his reality. If you listen to us talk about Capone, go watch The Untouchables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um. yeah, I know what you mean, Jad. Well, what about okay? So let let's say this though, because there are some there are some. Um, I second everything you're saying, and I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna dive into that for this very second. But let let's say this: there were a lot of moving sequences. So a lot of these we're calling them dementia trips. I don't know mm. why we coined that, but let, that's that's what they are. Yeah, um, that that these sequences. So one scene trickles into another. Very Sinitas esque, by the way. Shout out to our yeah. Sinitas uh, donors. Thank you so much for giving us money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what what did some of, did some of the sequences catch you yes yeah for sure yeah nice yeah like, i thought that then, there were some the, the next stab, the first the, next uh, was the first the first torture scene for matt dylan's character the first time they went in that guy fucking fucking stabbed the shit the out next of him stab. yeah, yeah for like five up. minutes yeah i mean and I that was scene like, didn't come out of nowhere that that was like the third scene in a sequence so kudos hmm. josh yeah i thought that there there were there, moments josh. that worked uh yes there, there were definitely a lot of moments that worked for me i just wasn't quite sure i wasn't quite sure and you don't need to know this when you're watching a movie i love this my favorite filming feeling when i'm watching a really excellent movie that is I, I understand what you said, Dave, but I don't really mind if somebody has a lot of control as long as they're really they're really nailing it. You know, you can just tell when somebody isn't really nailing it, and so a collaborator would and be it helpful. Really, my wasn't. favorite feeling yeah. it really was <clears throat> my favorite feeling when I'm watching a movie is that I'm not quite sure what's happening, but I'm in good hands. I know I'm in good hands, and this is all going to come together, and there's going to be some kind of deliverance. And I felt like the entire time I had that the bad version of that where I didn't know what was happening and I didn't know where we were going. And I wasn't sure Josh Trank was going to wrap it up. And so that I was going to have this catharsis. So there were mm. moments that were filmed really well. They were acted, you know, pretty damn well. And they were not written badly. And I just wasn't sure after the fact why I watched any of it. I'm, I'm not quite sure how that's, it all I mean, fit together. That's a, and what that's the point a similar it note I have here. It's like, what was the purpose of this whole film? Like, I really feel yeah. sorry for Tom Hardy because he at times really acted his ass off. Linda Carnalini did amazingly as the, the long suffering wife. Um, it, like all the cast was solid, but there was just nothing here. There was no thread, no redemption, no real story, nothing. I guess what was the story, you guys? What was the story? What was the, story? Ob- what was the- they're, they're too obsessed with Capone. This is a guess. I, I'm not. I'm not going to speculate too much. Um, the two obsessed with Capone and not the what happens to someone who had power, money, and everything, and then it all comes crumbling down. Like the human yes. journey of that. Yes. And 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 we cared way too much about the fact that it was Capone. When the truth is, this wasn't even really Capone anymore. You know, so no, even the was, questions it, like yeah, well, I, it I was like... sustaining for a little bit. Where I'm like, how is this guy living in this house? How does he have this metric? He's been in prison for 10 years. He hasn't had a paycheck in 20. The government should have seized every asset, including this house. Why is he even there? So that sustained me for a little bit. So that Capone element was fun. The fact that he could do whatever. I don't even know if the shit he was doing was real or if it was imaginary, which is fine. That's okay. But what? what why Why is any of this happening? And I think the answer to all of my questions is just, well, it's, it's Al Capone. And, and also, like, right. like, why if you were going to make a movie called well, Capone, so why would good. you? Why would you pick this point in his life? Like, there is. Why would you? Well, there, why would? Why would is, you pick it? There is no story. You're do what Jeff was saying. That's unless yeah. you're going to do what Jeff was saying. If if Capone was going to be a good vehicle to explore those issues, then right. sure, mm. we all know him now. Now we have access to it. Let's go for a ride. But I don't think they did that. I think they kept trying to ride the mobster line, which yeah. didn't make any fucking sense when it was mostly. It was supposed to be about his mental decline, and they kept right. trying to make it about Capone, the legacy of the the ultimate mobster, and that that was way less interesting to me than than if they would have really delved in to seeing somebody battle with that. And I don't know if part if I if I had Josh Trank across to me, I would want to ask him, were you trying to, did you want me to judge Al Capone, or did you want me to to actually see what what the end of life can be like for someone who goes from the top to the bottom because i feel like those are two different stories yeah was I'm, i supposed I'm not to go sure. on the dementia I'm, journey or I'm the, not sure the what he was trying bricks. to say here like and then we have that whole thing with the uh the alligator and the tidal wave and the you know the 
I mean, I know, I know, I know. I know, wish I know you did that cool. I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. Actually, that would have taken weeks. Yeah, you would have been paid for it. But yeah, <laughs> that was a very cool effect. That was a cool sequence. It was, but what what was the point of that? After all of everything we've been through, that hadn't even touched on any of that. Like it was. But if it had just been things like that, I think he could have weaved together a lot of really interesting where Capone was committed and sincere and not just sitting there with the camera pointed at him where he was totally spaced out. And he could have puzzled those pieces together so that it would have had an interesting narrative and it would have commented on what Jeff was saying. Yeah. This is what it feels like when you're scrambled. Also, this but is instead, a... I'm, I don't know what the fuck it was. I do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I, do, I, I want to bring up an interesting point too because I had to, like, because I don't know that much about Capone. I'm not, like, big on the history. Um, I know a little bit, but I didn't know when he died. And I felt like this was the 60s, not the 40s. The, mm. Was it Scarface? Did it have, like, a Scarface feel? Which is. It was, no, it was more the, the color was, like, it. the color was vibrant. Yeah. The color, it was, like, nothing dated it until they showed it a radio and i was like filmmaking was i thought weird. about that dave like yeah. was yeah. it a trap was it a trap because obviously this is a decision listeners that you have to make early on we're stuck in fucking florida do we film it realistically with bright vibrant colors or do we do we stylize it i kind of wanted him to stylize it a little bit because that did throw yeah. me off a little bit that it was yeah. so vibrant i know there was probably something that he was hoping would come from that uh, but I don't know for you guys. Tell also, me he has dementia. What what is what are we doing with all these bright colors? As if we're in like uh, where what dreams may come or whatever with Robin. What dreams like, may come. Yeah, yeah. It was so bright. <laughs> the guy has dementia. It's okay to gray up the palette a little bit. Yeah, I, I wanted a little bit more style, and and yet mm. I'm not quite sure. This is just sometimes art works and it doesn't. Did you guys have the feeling when it finally got to Capone at the very beginning when it finally showed you the title <laughs> slate and that music were you dropped? Were you nervous? I was yeah. like. What the fuck movie are we? I was like, what's happening? Filmmakers, (laughs) filmmakers, do not put Nessun Dorma in your film. Fucking for the love of God. There there are that is the only fucking (laughs) opera aria in any film. And they played this four fucking times. We had so many chances to get another film. And we're sitting here. First of all, it was it was Pavarotti, right? Pavarotti wasn't even singing yet by the time this movie takes place. Have some balls and pick an aria and even put Callus when she's younger remaster it or something <laughs> Nesu Dorma is such a fucking cheap shot right god a Mission Impossible movie blows people up at the high note like it's it's done it's 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 done you might as well put Stairway to Heaven in this fucking movie like get out stop it Jesus yeah. how long have you been holding on to that yeah. <laughs> it's John's favorite uh, favorite opera but god damn it does Nesu Dorma need to take a fucking break retire it yeah it's like the it's the pop culture version of opera arias. Like there are other really beautiful things. Point. All right, all right. Let me try to redeem it here. You're right, Dave. Linda was wonderful. My favorite mm. move, moment in this whole movie is when she slaps the shit out of him. That when yeah. he says yeah. something to her and she says, he "What the fuck?" Face. and she spits, slaps spits him and he spits in her face. Yeah. And she hits him so fucking hard and he goes down so hard. I laughed and he, he performed that fall really well. He was out like a light. I I guess. I, I guess I wanted I wanted a little bit more of her. I kept feeling like, oh, let me go a little bit down this road. And I wonder what they're thinking a little bit more. And whenever you have that feeling, you know, it's always a bad sign. Mm. I kind of wish this movie was completely from her point of view since that Capone would've was been so great. utterly unrelatable. <laughs> like, but yeah, we could it, not understand was, what the fuck was happening to him. So give half me Half the time you couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying either. So it, <laughs> it was like, yeah. what, what, what? I feel like, yeah, and somebody did describe this in a review. Yeah, that all the secondary characters were literally just foils to accentuate his experience. Like there, there was no texture to them. There's no reason. And I think Cardellini comes came the most to actually having a layered character. Yeah. Um, but the rest of them were literally just there to bounce off what he was doing. Well, which is th- that in a normal, uh, that's not the right word follow me when you're dealing with the protagonist there are typically sub supporting characters that are going to come in and do exactly that they're going to foil they're going to challenge and we might not need to know their entire point of view and story as long as there is a journey for the protagonist do you guys think his character learned anything in this entire film that that's really what it came down to was that these people didn't change him at all 
No. His circumstance did not change him. Like the the, so I don't really the know description if there was of this, any reason. The, the description of this film is he starts to regret his uh, previous violence, and I didn't get that at all. He's literally <laughs> just you, he's literally yes. just wandering through it in a fucking day state. I agree, dude. I agree. That was what I, I and maybe I should not have read that description. I, I don't know if anybody else. Sometimes I, I mean, like reading them. Sometimes I wish I hadn't. I wish I hadn't read that one. Yeah, it's right there on the fucking screen before you hit play. It's, it's like, <laughs> that's what they went with. And that was not what we got. Yeah. And I'm sure that to, to Josh Trank, you know, let's tip our hats for a second. I'm sure that is a very difficult line to walk when you're dealing with a protagonist who is having a, an in, intense mental decline with dementia. But I don't, I, I don't, I think there maybe is a more creative way to imagine what it would feel like to go through that and still quote learn something as an audience member through what's happening to this character. And I just don't know if he achieved that. I know that's, mm. I, I hate saying that, but I, I wanted to love this movie. I love Tom Hardy and everybody around him did a good job. Matt Dillon, that scene when he's next to him by the bed, I was all in. I was like, this is cool, dude. He's doing a good job. I feel like he's right from that period. I'm, I, I liked good it. Job. I liked uh, Al Sap- Sapienza, his brother-in-law, Ralphie. Mm. I think it's his brother. Excuse me. I think it's his brother. I thought he did a great job. Like there was that whole was extra thing with the kid that kept calling the house. The son, Tony. Yeah. yeah. And the like there was, the, yeah, there was, the there was yeah. almost no point to that storyline either. There was no point yeah. to the hidden money. Um, yeah. That was like almost a device just to keep the story going. Uh, and which yeah. led to the scene at the end where he shits himself during the interview. Like there were, I, I feel like everything that whole storyline was put in there for that one scene, and it it's just yeah, there was a lot of a lot of stuff that should have worked and didn't. And I, I, I I'm landing it squarely on the writing, guys. I'm landing it squarely on the writing. Definitely started stuff. with. I don't that. know what he was going for, but it just yeah. yeah. Any if filmmaking anyway. is an extension of a writing a script. Then, yeah, the writing uh, in general. You're only, you're only as good <laughs> as your source material. Uh, I, I dare I, you. I want to take issue with the Tommy gun. I'm sorry. A, a fucking gold Tommy gun? You like the Tommy gun? Like that's, that's, yeah, that's, I, that I, didn't happen. I could no, not stop thinking real, about... Right? When we were talking about... Um, what was the racing movie with Sylvester Stallone? Oh, and, uh, uh, Dave. The racing? Was that bad? Oh, yeah. Chase Across the Country. Death Race Death, 2000. Death. Death yeah. race. I could not stop thinking about when Jeff said, and Slavon pulls out a depression era machine gun. <laughs> talking about a Tommy gun. <laughs> I could not stop thinking about that. Depression era. That yeah. made me fucking yes. piss myself. I dare you. Here's my drinking game. Okay. I dare you to drink every time you can't understand Tom Hardy. I right. dare you. You wait, kill no, people. I have a better drinking game. <laughs> I dare you to drink. I dare you to drink every time you think he sounds like the grandfather. From vague, from um Christmas vacation. A blessing. A yeah. <laughs> <A blessing. laughs> Guys, Nest and Dorm is the wrong song. The Nest and Dorm is about how no one will sleep because I will win. He's dying. <laughs> Choose Adil Fiorito is ill about how he's saying goodbye to the house because he can't see. Like I stop oh, in the uh, Really, I'm sorry. That's the the, the 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 only thing you've got to criticize is fucking music choices. <laughs> That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with this film. When I heard it the third Dave, or fourth time, I was just, I was like, "Fucking choice." Dave, what's your drinking game? What are you What are you gonna paralyze us with in this movie? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. I think well, it, the carrot for a cigar was funny. I I would Sorry, have Dave. to say that was, that was funny. I I couldn't even tell you what like the drinking game would be for every minute this is playing. To be honest, oh, oh, my get out God. of here! Every it time was, he kill, oh every time God. you you celebrate the fact that he's trying to kill a crocodile, and you're like, you know what, <laughs> crocodile should go. Not a good movie, but God damn it, he killed a yeah. crocodile. They're a fucking That's menace. The Shoot him. Yeah, Actually, no, sorry. Um, I'm so sorry, people. What? It's they're alligators. They're not crocodiles. Yeah, they're, they're alligators. alligators. Um, what uh, what was the significance of the kid on the other side of the lake, or whatever was on the other side of the lake going on? Did he, did anyone he pick was up being on that? Watched. They were banging it over the head that he he felt like he was being watched. We know he was being watched because they told us in the opening credits he was being yeah. watched. So he was sitting there. It's like I think I'm being watched, and we're like, you are. He told us, he told yeah. us that. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, they're watching us, the fucking feds, man. And we're like, yes, you're in a federal compound. That's your parole. Get out of here. Like, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, yeah, this was uh, this was a miss for me. I, I can't redeem this. <laughs> yeah, so you far, you guys. You guys, so thumbs far, up or thumbs down on this movie? <laughs> this, hold on, wait. We've watched 
four, four, four so far. This is my Razzie vote so far. I would rather watch the the last thing he wanted than this movie. How about you guys? I know you both had a lot of issues with the last thing he wanted. I think this was worse than that movie. Huh. Hmm. Yes, I, I think this is worse than that movie. I'm thinking, okay, we did Fantasy Island, and then what was what was the first? Oh, Fantasy um, Island was better Dr. than Doolittle. this. Yeah, this is probably my this is probably Doctor Doodle was this way better than this. Yeah, um, yeah. That, no, I wait, think... wait, wait, way better, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's too bad anyway, I, I, he should still, film get a, he should still get a movie. Maybe not I mean, a Star I, Wars movie. At the end of at the end of this, we're definitely going to do a special show where we make our list. For our predictions. Yeah, it's too bad because we were yeah. trying to avoid it, but it has to happen. Yeah, it has to All right, happen. People. I loved, oh, mm. wait, last, uh, Kyle MacLachlan was my saving grace in this film. <laughs> it it, <laughs> was, it like, was fun to see him do movie. a grounded role. It was, it's after yeah, all yeah, the eccentric it. stuff he's been doing it's lately, it was, it was fun to see it, him do something Him normal. and Linda Cardellini were in a better movie than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. And, and, Tom, and Tom Hardy is good, but, but you know, anyway. 